can see the overall uh, topics on which we are going to discuss uh, are quite, it's not necessarily only about climate change, but also about the other aspects which affects us, uh, our food security or our uh, energy and environment related issues, also inequality and uh, many other topics. So I think this is uh, very important uh, for us to see holistically, not only from the climate change aspect, but uh, if we have to move towards a sustainable goal or sustainability, I think the how the climate change issues we are going to address, at the same time we have to address issues related to hunger, we need to address issues related to uh, inequality, we need to address issues related to health, and of course, uh, also the other issues which are equally important that peace and justice and so these and the kind of people which uh, are agreed to participate in this are extremely uh, i would say that familiar with this and the expert in these each of their field so we are going to get a extremely good perspective about uh, this specific report and uh, again, before I hand over back to the panelists, I again extremely grateful to all of you for agreeing actually at a very short notice, I must say, and all of you are extremely busy, but still you find time for this very important activity. And I'm sure that the at the end of the day, the recommendations which came out, uh, we will definitely try to follow it up with the all concern and uh, of course, uh, Dr. Bhatt is here, so we would be definitely following it up, how this recommendation can get into with the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So thank you very much for all, and let's have a very fruitful uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nayak, uh, for that welcome, and uh, we uh, I also extend my gratitude to all the speakers who uh, agreed at very short notice. That is very true. Um, and uh, we are looking forward to a very sort of lively discussion as we go forward. But before we uh, start the panel discussion, I would invite uh, Dr. J.R. Putt, who is a scientific advisor to the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India. Uh, he is also the national focal point for the IPCC. And so therefore, uh, across the uh, three working groups of the IPCC, the approval sessions, as well as the entire review process, he's been uh, an extremely active and leading the charge in many ways. So uh, over to you, Dr. Bhatt. Uh, just uh, just one announcement before I hand over to Dr. Bhatt uh, is that we will be recording the proceedings uh, of this uh, session. Uh, so just uh, in you know just to let everybody know. Thank you very much. Do over to you, Dr. Pat. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Tejal. Uh, respected Dr. Selesh Nayak, Director of the Institute, distinguished invited participants, ladies and gentlemen. We are very happy that a premier institute like the National Advance, National Institute of Advanced Studies is organizing this webinar on IPCC's sixth assessment report. And I am so happy that there are such the the, the gathering is such an August gathering with so many experts who have joined. And I also notice the distinguished presence of my, my dear and respected Professor Jim Skia. Professor Jim Skia, are you around? I just saw somewhere the name Jim Skia. Anyhow, so if he is not there, he might be joining. Let me uh, at the outset once again. Dr. Tejal Kanitkar and also Dr. Jairaman from MSSRF and Dr. Anand Patwardhan to be the moderator. 
India has been participating in the activities of IPCC since its inception and playing a very constructive role. Let me uh, say a bit about IPCC. IPCC consolidates and assesses available literature based on agreed themes for each working group report. But how the literature gets chosen, interpreted, assessed, and then eventually summarized is dependent on authors and many round of inputs from the governments the world over. The composition of the author team, therefore, is very important. Representation from developing countries is less. And therefore, the themes that are important for developing countries, such as equity, justice, the CBDR, these very cardinal points, they get less attention. It is also a fact that many of the positive stories from developing countries do not find proper representation. But nevertheless, IPCC provides, and it does provide, the most updated scientific knowledge on climate change. And it must, however, this knowledge be interpreted with care. Very often in the of sensational statements, commentators the world over, some of them tend to provide a very unbalanced view of the outcomes of the assessment. This takes away from the scientific value and robustness of the reports. In this backdrop, India's role has been a very positive one, a very constructive one. And its role in IPCC has been to ensure that important scientific information is both assessed and present in a correct and balanced manner, that the best available science is presented instead of messaging that may tend to devalue the science at any given point of time, and also that policy relevant not policy prescriptive, I repeat, policy relevant information is elevated to the SPM in a very balanced manner. Now, if we see three IPCC reports to this end, then we find that in working group one, for example, the importance of the historical emissions and the carbon budget is highlighted. In working group two, it was ensured that the story was not just of doom and gloom, but that it is possible to protect our people and planet from the imminent threat of climate change, from the impacts of climate change, and that development is crucial, that the development is very crucial for reducing climate risks is clearly recognized. Similarly, in the working group three, the SPM says that four-fifths of the carbon budget for limiting warming to below 1.5 degrees centigrade is already exhausted and that more than half of the past cumulative emissions have in fact occurred before 1990 and are from the developed countries. You are all experts. You will deliberate on all the three working groups. But let me make two last points. My penultimate point before I close is that the communication from IPCC reports and its SPM, especially actionable, need to be there in a simplified manner. These are reports of three to 4,000 pages, three to 4,000 plus pages. And SPMs are also quite long, around 40 to 60 pages. 
So if they are further simplified with actionable points, it will be very helpful for the whole world. My second point is that, and this pertains to India, that India walks the talk on the subject of climate change. And when it comes to this subject, it speaks from a position of strength and responsibility. With just 4%, even about 4% emissions as said in the working group 3 SPM, India is not responsible for the mess that the world is in today in terms of climate change. Yet, we want to be an active partner in solving the problem. With these words, I once again thank Dr. Selesh Nayak for organizing this webinar. And I wish all the participants a very productive deliberations. Thank you. And over to the moderator, my, my dear friend, Dr. Uh, Anand Patwardhan or Dr. Tejal, whosoever is taking it forward. Wish you very productive deliberations. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pat. And that was uh, really a, a great overview of uh, not just the IPCC process, but the challenges that we face uh, uh, going forward in terms of interpreting the science as well as uh, ensuring that concerns of developing countries are reflected adequately. Um, I just want to make a couple of housekeeping uh, announcements. Uh, so we request that everyone uh, keep their microphones muted uh, during the, the panel discussion. Uh, we also request that uh, the chat box is disabled for the duration of this uh, uh, discussion. So we would uh, request that uh, if you have queries that you want to write down and send, uh, then then uh, there is a, a email ID which is nias n i a s uh, dot ipcc at gmail dot com. Uh, we will that you should send your queries here. We will consolidate these queries if there are written queries, uh, and uh, make sure that uh, as many of these we can address in the question and answer session. Uh, we would uh, in in the after the uh, panel discussion. Uh, in the question and answer session, we request that you raise your hand. If you see the tab here, there, there is a tab called reactions, which allows you to raise your hand. You can raise your hand and the moderator will then give you the floor. We do request that the uh, questions and comments be kept brief so that we can get through as many as possible. Uh, just with this, I will hand over now to uh, Professor Anand Patwardhan, who is uh, a faculty at uh, University of uh, Maryland College Park. Uh, he has, however, uh, whole, I think worn many hats over the over the years. Uh, when I knew him, he was uh, first UAB, he was a faculty member at IIT Bombay um, in Mumbai. And he has, of course, been for many years working on various aspects of climate change, uh, adaptation, climate finance, uh, mitigation, um, and a whole array of issues concerning this. So uh, over to you, Anand, and thank you very much for agreeing to moderate and taking on this task. Thank you very much, uh, Tejal. It's a real pleasure to be here with, uh, with many old friends and colleagues, uh, and thanks very much, uh, Dr. Nayak for organizing this uh, webinar and of course to uh, Dr. Bhatt for setting the stage with some really uh, clear uh, opening comments. Uh, we have a, a very rich array of speakers lined up uh, and I think you know to get this uh, get this webinar going it comes at a really important time. It comes at a very opportune moment in the process. Uh, the reports of the three working groups uh, have been released. Uh, the synthesis report, which of course is intended to bring together all of these reports into an overall uh, view, is under preparation and will be approved in a few months. So in a sense, this is really a, a ideal time to, to reflect a little bit on the findings uh, of the reports, but also what is the overall narrative and the policy implications of those findings as they are emerging. 
because as you might imagine, and Dr. Butt referred to this SPM, the summary for policymakers, the SPM is a negotiated document and my colleagues here on this call have spent many sleepless days and nights in, in negotiating uh, the the SPM. So that's a, a real a tribute to their, um, their endeavors. Uh, but the SPM, because it is a negotiated document, assumes a lot of significance because it, it presents a certain view uh, of the world. And in fact, it is indeed that narrative, that higher level narrative, which becomes very important for us to understand and critique and ensure that it embeds the perspectives uh, of developing countries. And others have mentioned the IPCC's value proposition rests on two foundations, that it is authoritative in terms of accurately reflecting the underlying literature and especially the full diversity of perspectives within it, right? So it's not cherry picking either facts or views. Uh, and also that it is policy relevant in the sense of supporting and informing the policy process, but not, as Dr. Butt mentioned, advocating for any particular policy position. And there, I think that places a particular burden on authors uh, for having to put aside their own individual uh, views and perspectives on uh, or their own advocacy positions, but really focus on what the evidence base is and what that evidence is saying. Policy relevance is important for the IPCC to have value. Just to give an example, uh, since many of the uh, presentations here that you'll hear from shortly cover aspects related to mitigation, I thought I would just give one example from the adaptation uh, that is the Working Group 2 report. So the Working Group 2 report uh, for SPM presents a assessment of the feasibility of adaptation options at 1.5 degrees. Now, from a risk management perspective, one might quite reasonably argue and wonder whether the whole purpose of adaptation is in fact to help us deal with potentially higher levels of climate change. So one might sort of step back and say, okay, how relevant is it for me to understand uh, the feasibility of adaptation at 1.5? Should I rather not look at the full range of uh, climate risks and what it will take for us to adapt to potentially higher levels of climate change? But that was just an example. I think you will hear a lot of uh, other examples and perspectives in the um, in 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 the short in the time ahead. Uh, this is going to be a uh, a really significant undertaking. Uh, we have a number of short presentations, and I will try and keep us to the time as much as possible so that we will get uh, the maximum time at the end for uh, a robust Q&A and, and a discussion.